So you're in your classroom and it's the big day of your mathematics exam and after perfectly finishing the previous problem, you see a hard calculus question. You then turn the page over and see another hard calculus question with interesting sub-questions. Now you're initially taken back, but then you remember watching a Mathesy video a couple weeks earlier where we taught you how to cheat calculus with parametric and implicit differentiation. So let's start off with parametric equations and let's take the good old unit circle. Then traditionally we can define this with a third variable t where the y coordinate is equal to sine t and the x coordinate is equal to cosine t. And if we plot this on a graph we see it does indeed give us the unit circle. But actually this isn't the full picture. What we have are blueprints for the full structure of this equation. And that structure is the three dimensional spiral or helix which is extremely useful in construction and biology. Now if we line up with the y axis we see that we actually get the graph of x equal to cosine t, our first blueprint. Now if we rotate around and line up with the y axis we actually see that we get a graph of y equal to sine t which is our second blueprint. And for the finale if we align ourselves with the t-axis then we get our good old unit circle. So these blueprints essentially act as the top and side views of the helix. Now what we want to do is focus on gradients in order to find a so-called parametric derivative and what we will show is how we can use the change in x over the change in t and the change in y over the change in t to give us dy by dx. And dy by dx is actually a projection or shadow of the three-dimensional gradient of the spiral spiral with delta t completely removed. Now since we already know what y and x are in terms of t, then we know what delta y over delta t actually is. And let's say that it's equal to some value a at t. Similarly, let's say delta x over delta t is equal to some value b at the same value of t. Then we can rearrange and we can find delta y over delta x. And what we see is that delta t can now this is actually equivalent to creating the projection as we mentioned earlier and we also see that the cancellation of delta t is ingrained within delta y over delta x because if we look at the spiral from a top view the t axis is omitted. Okay great but what does this all mean? Well we have a over b or a divided by b and we recall that a is delta y over delta t and b is delta x over delta t. Then taking the limits of both sides allows us to convert our deltas into d's. Now if this step is not familiar to you then check out our differentiation video linked in the description below. Now dividing by dx by dt is the same as multiplying by dt by dx. Now this is our parametric formula for dy by dx. But hang on a second, this is the chain rule. What's going on? Well actually what we'll see is that this makes perfect sense. Now imagine we had the Cartesian equation for the circle and then try to find dy dx. Well what we'd first do is rearrange the equation giving us y equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. Then if we make the substitution t equal to arc cosine x or x equal to cosine t as we would do if we were going to use the chain rule then what we would get is y equal to the square root of 1 minus cos squared t which is equal to the square root of sine squared t which is just sine t. But look what we have here. What we've ended up with is our parametric equation. So parametric differentiation is the exact same as the chain rule where the first step has actually already been done for us. Furthermore, this means that we can visualize the chain rule because when we make the third variable substitution, what we're actually doing is accessing the three dimensional analog of that function. Now let's actually try to find dy by dx. Now we know that dy by dt is equal to cosine t and dx by dt is equal to minus sine t. And 
and then using the chain rule and using the fact that dt by dx is equal to 1 over dx by dt, we have dy by dx is equal to cosine t divided by minus sine t, which substituting back in is equal to minus x over y, which in turn is equal to minus x over the square root of 1 minus x squared, and this is our derivative. Now in the land of calculus, there's actually an even sneakier way of using the chain rule, and that way is essentially like cheating, and that is implicit differentiation. And in order to understand this, let's start with explicit functions. Now an explicit function is where we write y directly as a function of x, that is y equal to something. For example, y equal to x plus 1 squared, or y equal to e to the x times sine x, or even the equation for the circle y equal to square root of 1 minus x squared. Now an implicit function is where we have y's and x's on one side, Side and possibly y's and x's on the other side. For example, y minus x plus 1 all squared equal to 0, which is actually the implicit form of the first equation. Now another is x squared plus y squared equal to 1, which is an implicit form of the unit circle. But now you're probably thinking, what is the point of implicit functions if I can just write them all explicitly? Well, actually, there are some functions which can never be written explicitly. For example, the elliptic equation x squared plus xy equal to 16 minus y squared. No matter how hard you try and rearrange, you'll never get y equal to something. But in this case, y still acts as a function of x, that is, if we input some x, we still get an output for y. Now, implicit differentiation essentially follows a differentiate first and ask questions later methodology. So, for example, take the equation for the good good old unit circle, and let's differentiate both sides and ask questions later. Now the derivative of 1 is 0, and we can split the derivative on the left hand side. Now the derivative of x squared is just 2x, and the derivative of y squared is… wait a second. How do we differentiate y squared with respect to x? Normally we would need some sort of function of x. And this is where we incorporate the chain rule in a genius way. Now we know that if our equation is implicit or explicit, y is still a function of x. So let's take an example, let y equal to x plus 1. Now imagine we had another function, u equal to x plus 1 all squared. Now u is actually equal to y squared, and we know that du by dx is the same as dy squared by dx. But what we actually see is a chain rule setup for the function u, where y is the substitution. And in this case, by the chain rule, we have du by dx equal to du by dy times dy by dx. Now replacing u with y squared gives us that the derivative of y squared with respect to x is equal equal to the derivative of y squared with respect to y times dy by dx. And now we can differentiate y squared with respect to y, leaving us with 2y times dy by dx. Now the general form of this is, if I want to differentiate a function of y with respect to x, then we differentiate with respect to y first, and then multiply by dy by dx. So going back to our old example, to find the derivative derivative of y squared with respect to x, we take the derivative of y squared with respect to y and multiply by dy by dx. And we know that the derivative of y squared with respect to y is 2y. And now all we do is rearrange for dy by dx, giving us the exact same answer as before. So let's take this elliptic equation, which actually cannot be rearranged, and let's try to find dy by dx. Well, let's first differentiate both sides and let's split each derivative. Now let's differentiate each term and it's handy to remember the product rule or quotient rule in a lot of these circumstances. Now the derivative of x squared is 2x and the derivative of x times y can be solved using the product rule. 
And we're quite lucky in this case because we end up with dy by dx rather than dy squared by dx or even dy cubed by dx. So we don't actually need to worry about this any further. Now the derivative of any constant is zero and for the derivative of y squared with respect to x, we first differentiate with respect to y and then multiply by dy by dx, giving us 2y dy by dx. Finally, we factorize and rearrange for dy by dx, giving us our answer. Now, the best way to get good at anything is to practice, so check out our problem sheet linked in the description below with full solutions, which is available for everyone. Now, if you guys learned anything, hit that like button. If you haven't already, subscribe and head over to mathc.com for problem sheets, notes, and more of our videos.